chicken chat cha time. Oh my goodness, you guys, we got a fence. It's kind of amazing that I can now let my kids out in the backyard without fearing for their safety. Um, and the chickens too, because now Mr. Foxy Loxy, who lives over the hill, can't eat my chickens anymore. He's already eaten two of my chickens, so now he can't eat my chickens. And they're kind of exploring the fence. They're not really quite sure what it means. It kind of cracks me up. Hey, Jen. Hey, Rebecca. Oh my gosh, they're going to get in this dirt. You see them? This is the funniest thing they do. They like to dig up the dirt and squish their bodies down in there. And they're so cute. Oh my goodness, I want to talk about momming today because momming can be so hard. Does anybody else have um, that one child? Maybe more than one child. That is like just harder than the other kids? Or am I the only one? I love all my children. They're all wonderful. But I have one where just no matter what he does, I feel like it annoys me. And no matter what I say to him, he doesn't want to do it. It's very weird. And I don't, I don't know what it is about our personalities that just seem to clash. But I can't be the only one in this. Does anybody else have this experience? with one of their children um, that they just, Jared has it too. It's a different child. Um, we have a, a we, we both just have a hard time with one of our kids and it's a, it's a different kid for each of us. And I think sometimes I look at him when he's struggling with the one and I'm like, why are you like, why are you guys not getting along? Like, I don't even understand, but I'm the same way. I think he's the same way when he watches me with the other one that I have such a hard time with, but let me paint you a picture. This just happened. This just happened. My kids are home for the summer. I love the summer. We've been doing some fun stuff. I actually feel like I'm the funnest mom I've ever been this summer because one, I haven't had a new baby and two, I haven't been pregnant. And that has pretty much been my life for every summer from here and like for a decade. So I've been doing fun stuff. We went to the beach. We've gone to the pool. We went to the butterfly rainforest. Like I'm pretty much rocking summer, but the last couple of days, my van has been in the shop and we had to be home anyway for them to install this fence. So we've been kind of stuck at home for the last few days and they start to get on each other's nerves and they kind of pick at each other. And then all of a sudden everyone's getting hurt and everyone's tattling and the tattling. Oh my gosh, the tattling. If you guys have, have a tip for me on how to stop the tattling. Because I don't really give into it. I don't like rush to their aid when it happens. I, I don't know what to do about the tattling, but the tattling has got to go because if I hear one more time that so and so did so and so something to so and so, I think I might rip my hair out. <laughs> I really think I might. Um, so, that being said, if you guys have tips on tattling, I need to hear them. So, they're tattling. Somebody did something to someone. It involved. I don't really want to name names because I don't want to embarrass my kids, but um, my child that I have a hard time with was the culprit. He often is the culprit. I feel like he's the culprit because he's trying to get my attention. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> they got spooked by something. They're cracking me up. Hi, Kristen. Thank you. Um, I'll post it on YouTube later so you can go back and watch it. But this child that I struggle with was an instigator in an incident. It sounds as though he jumped off our high top kitchen counter onto the couch and landed on someone. Okay, I can't begin to express to you how dangerous this choice was. It is not close. It is a, it is not a jump, it's a leap. And he, we're lucky nobody got really hurt. I was upstairs cleaning a bathroom, so I didn't know this was going on. So I want to yell at him because I was mad, but I was, I'm really been working on my yelling and I didn't want to, I, I didn't yell at him. So I, yay for me. Okay. So let's just count that for the victory that it is. And I'm like, okay, but I've got to address this because this is a safety issue and this needs to stop and somebody's hurt. Okay. So this isn't just the normal run of the mill tattling. So I took a page out of my friend Julie's book and I pulled out the scriptures. Hey, Jamie. And I asked him to copy down a verse of scripture three, five times. 
I think five times is what I'm aiming for. This child is seven. He can write, he can read, so this is not a difficult task. Well, he did not want to do it. And he hemmed and he hawed and he carried on and he started crying and he tore a page out of the scriptures, which later come to find out was already loose, so it really wasn't his fault. All the while, I'm trying to be on, and part of the problem with me being so annoyed is that I was on the phone with a good friend of mine who I never get to talk to and like the stars aligned and I was able to actually have a conversation with her on the phone and you know, this is all going on when she's available. And so I'm like, if I miss my window of opportunity, it's going to be like a month before I can get her back on the phone. And so he's having a hard time with the fact that I want him to write the scripture. I don't want to yell at him, you guys. I really didn't want to yell at him. So I just calmly said, because we got the fence. So my husband's promise is that with the tent that he bought recently, they're going to camp in the backyard on Friday. So I said to this child, who I know really wants to go camping in the backyard. I said, hey, um, if you don't do it, then you just won't camp in the backyard. Am I mean? Like, I felt like I needed him to quit crying about it. He did something wrong. He needed to do what his mom asked. And it's not like I spanked him or yelled at him. I asked him to copy a verse of scripture, which had a purpose, okay? So I, he decides that he's going to do this because he quiets down. He quits kicking the wall. And he writes the scripture. He gets it done once when I check. By the time I check on him, hey, Justine, hey, Natalie. Um, by the time I check on him, he's finished one verse. And so it's almost lunchtime. So I say to him, um, okay, you can do two more verses. I, I lightened the sentence. You can do two more verses. I want you to give me three nice copies of it. And I want you to come down and see me. So just as I'm finishing the grilled cheese sandwiches, he brings it down. He's finished his three verses. He wrote them very nicely and neatly. And I then I had him read it to me, okay? And I said, okay, Grayson, why? Oh, I just said his name. I wasn't going to say his name. Anyway, I said, why? Why did I ask you to do this? And uh, we had a conversation about it. About the verse that I had him write. That the reason that I have rules are because I want to keep everybody safe. Hey, Natasha. Hey, Shara. Hey, Heidi. Um, I want to keep everybody safe. I want to keep him safe. I want them to be happy. And when you break the rules, there are consequences every time. And sometimes you don't have control over those consequences. And this may seem like a deep lesson for a seven-year-old, but I'm trying to get him to understand that the things he chooses to do affect other people. And he can't, he's not bad but it was not a good choice. So I guess the reason I'm coming to you is because this is emotionally draining and now I can see them. They finished their lunch and they're back at it. I can see them from here to the window. And I just, I don't even know what to do with them. Like, is this just what boys do? I mean, I would love to hear your guys' opinions on this. I would love to know what you do when your kids break the rules and how you handle it. Um, because yelling is not an option for me. Um, <laughs> wisdom? I don't know if I have any wisdom. I feel like I'm flying by the seat of my pants all the time. But I would really love to know what works for you. Because it needs to be something that I can do quickly. It needs to be something that I can do to show love. It needs to be something that I can do consistently. Because I hate those parenting things that are like, well, do this crazy thing. And yes, it's going to work so great for you. Well, you know what, guys? Those things don't work for me. Because I have five children who are nine and under. And time like I feel like a gnat like I'm from this to this to this to this to this to this I'm um, just going back and forth back and forth trying to just keep it together um, and maybe go to the bathroom by myself so you know I want to know what works for you I I mean really what have you done that is tried and true or are you just flying by the seat of your pants like me too because maybe that's the secret we fly by the seat of our pants we love our children fiercely and we just do the best that we can and pray that they don't get screwed up. Because that's kind of how I'm approaching parenting for the most part. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. But I know that it won't always be like this. I know that the older they get, you know, the more they want. I don't know. At least with my experience, the older they get, the easier it is for them to actually listen to me and follow through. So I just have to be patient. Patience is hard. I know I'm not the only one that struggles with that. 
Anyways, I just wanted to share this story with you, I guess because momming can be so hard. It is not for sissies. And I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying not to screw my kids up. And I'm, I'm just doing my best. And I'm sure that a lot of you other moms are like that as well, you know? And you know what, Natasha, I hear you say that. You know, I, I used to be much more of a yeller. I'll be honest. I was raised by Ital an Italian father who the volume was just high, right? So he's not yelling, but you think he's yelling. And I remember having conversations with him and be like, Dad, why are you yelling at me? And he's like, I'm not yelling at you. I'm like, well, it feels like you're yelling at me. <laughs> Just because of the volume, right? Um, and and I do raise my voice or become stern, but I, I no longer yell, at least not often. I'm not going to say it never happens because it does, um, but I used to yell all the time, and I just have worked on it. I don't know what has changed. I'm going to think on that, Natasha, because something clicked for me, and I, I was able to really, really bring it down about 10 notches. Um, one thing that I like to do when I really just get too much is I definitely need a timeout. Here they all come. Hey guys! We're going to have to end our chicken chat. But the truth is, is that... <laughs> yes! Italians are loud! We can't help ourselves! We can't help ourselves! Um, thanks, Sue. Yes, I think we all are doing better than we think we are. I really do believe that. And I think we really need to show ourselves some grace. Um, but you know, this child who gives me a hard time tonight when it's bedtime, I'm going to tuck him in his bed. I'm going to hug him. I'm going to kiss him. I'm going to say prayers with him. I'm going to sing to him and scratch his back. And, you know, hopefully those are the things he remembers. Not not when, when, when I lose it, you know? But, oh, somebody's got a chicken. Let go of the chicken. <laughs> I better go save my chickens from my baby. Anyways, you guys have a great day. Thank you for joining me. And just, you know, momming is hard. And you guys got this. And let's let's brainstorm how we handle them. Because summer, we still have six weeks left. And we all need to survive it.